in military service. But I would like to recognize any who are in the military and say thank you for what you have done. I did not get in the military. I was kind of in between everything. By the time I got out of high school and all. And, uh, I think the Vietnam War was just about getting over with and everything else. And, so I was back in 1972 when I graduated from high school and didn't have us to register or anything else or do anything, but other people before me were not as fortunate. Uh, they did have to go and give their lives uh, to this. But I do like to recognize some people. Uh, well, first of all, for those who are still here. Anyone here other Mr. Kim, I know you were in the military. You know. Yes. Air Force. Yeah, the Air Force. Anyone else here? Tracy, you are? Army. Army. There you go. Korean War. Okay. Well, it doesn't matter. War is a war. <laughs> so everybody uh, who served, and I want to thank you all. Uh, appreciate what you all have done and others as well. Uh, but people who, who you may or may not know, um, there's some of the names that I, and I don't want to omit anyone, so uh, if there's anyone else, you can let me know or even let me know now. Um, just people who are, who are still alive right now and did serve in the military. Joe Neesom, uh, Victor Catrea Sr., uh, Jake Perkle, uh, Janet Mortrude, uh, Jason Burgess, um, uh, Clarence Poe, uh, Kim, of course, Tracy, C.J. Miller, uh, Danny Bryant, Carlos Lawson, uh, Joseph Billiot, my brother, uh, and Mr. Larry Davis. Uh, these are still alive and they have served. It says someone else who was alive who uh, was alive who was, because I've got some of the ones who are deceased in a minute. Johnny. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. I didn't realize he was. Followers of the Marines. I didn't realize that. I forgot all about that. She wins. Terrible, huh? <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> okay. Linda. I'm a field says grandsons. Okay. And his boys. Um, yes. Taylor's and the Navy. Okay. And I think he re-enlisted. Okay. And then um, Blake just made Sergeant in the Marines, and he's in North Carolina. Okay. And I think Blake, I mean, I think Taylor's like in another country right now. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. My brain thumbs straight red. Okay. Green. Yes. Okay. Great. Okay. All right. All right. And those uh, again, the memorial is to remember the many people who have passed and uh, have served in the military as well. Yesterday, I did. I went to the to the veterans cemetery right there off of Interstate 12 and walked around the whole place and. There are, there are thousands and thousands of, of graves there. They all had the flags in front of the graves and walked around there just to remember the many people who gave their lives so that we can have the freedom that we have today uh, concerning it. Uh, Floyd Milton Deal, Miss Hattie May Ellen Clark Carter. I had to get a whole name in there. She always did that. <laughs> I used to love what she used to always do that. Um, uh, Morris Tremaine, who was my dad. Um, James Bernie Garrett. Uh, Jimmy Mustachio, who was a cousin of mine. Uh, Bill Wells, he was in the, he was in the military. Uh, Ken Pelcher, Sr. Uh, I don't know, is there some others that have passed and who have served in the military that you would like to mention? My dad. Oh, okay. I didn't realize your dad was. And then my mama, um, okay. two of her brothers were, I think Uncle Felix was, and I think Claude was. Yeah. Her, her older two brothers passed on. Yeah. They were both. One was okay. in the Navy and one was in the Okay. But Daddy was in the Army. He studied medicine in the Army. Okay. He was in Alaska. Okay. And when he came back here, he, um, we lived in Mississippi, and Slide of Memorial, they were opening up, and they found him. So we moved to Slide out so he could be a lab tech, an x-ray technician in the hospital. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Ms. Sarah? Yes? I have seven brother in laws, two brothers, and my husband is in the service. Wow. That is awesome. That is awesome. 
taken? My dad was in the Navy, okay. and my uncle loved the military so much that when he got out of the Army, yeah. he joined the Navy. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Steve. My dad, Lloyd. Okay. Pass, and my brother, Dave. Okay. Yeah. All right. right. Awesome. Johnny. Yeah, Debbie's dad. Oh, okay. World War II and uh, Okay. All right. All right. Anyone else is family or member or whatever you know that have? Uh, yes, um, Ginger. Bruce's son. Uh, oh, yeah. Is in the army. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He's still alive, yeah. though. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay, I forgot about him. Yeah, that's right, yeah, because he was at the wedding and everything else with the, uh, yeah. Okay, so yeah. Anyone else? But you know, it is a time in which we reflect and we remember uh, the many people who are in the military and also who gave their lives over the years uh, to serve in the military. You know, there are, there are many who could not for whatever reason and there's no, you know, no reflection upon any one of them as far as that. But you know, these people, they, you know, they, they gave um, the time, their effort, and everything. And so it's a time in which we, uh, United States of America, we set aside Memorial Weekend to remember the many people in the past who have uh, served and are now uh, have died and remembered what they have done. And again. I would like, you know, from, I'm sure from everybody here and everybody else as well, all who have served in the military, whether living or dead, my, I can't, words cannot express how uh, sincerely grateful I am to the many, many, many people who have served and gave their, uh, their time and their service in order that we, in the U.S., we have this time now where we have this freedom. We're able to do the many things that we're able to do today because of that, you know. And it all started back in 1775. We went against the British and, and, the, and the 13 colonies, I think it was, that started everything. And we, since that time, we've been defending uh, our freedom and our rights. So well, I want to just honor and show appreciation for all of them as well. Uh, before Mr. Al comes, we want to recognize uh, a few birthdays and a few anniversaries that are coming up in the month of June. Uh, the 9th of June is Mr. Tracy Wally. Your birthday, right? Yeah. Yes. Um, June 10th, uh, Debbie's grandchild, Gabriel? Or oh, what is he? Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Gabriel. Yeah, Gabriel. Um, the 22nd of June is Deborah Trimmy. Is that right? 22nd? Yeah. 22nd. Uh, the 27th of June is Joey Bryant, Renee and Danny's uh, son. Um, we have a few anniversaries coming up. The 8th of June is Mandy and Brian's anniversary. Uh, the 17th of June is Danny and Renee's anniversary. And then on the 27th of June is Michael and Megan's anniversary. Um, just so you'll know as well, um, the 31st is Jake Perkle's birthday on the 31st. And Tomorrow, the 29th, is Jason and Mindy's, uh, Burgess's uh, anniversary. They'll be married 14 years um, tomorrow. Um, and there's a picture up back there of them uh, of being married, but the picture in the back, in case many want to know, the picture is not basically for the wedding, it's to show what the church looked like before we were burned. Uh, that's the only picture, big picture I had to show people, okay, this is what it looked like. This is what the church did look like uh, before we rebuilt the church. That's the picture of their of their wedding uh, on the 29th. It's post Katrina uh, I said it's post Katrina before the fire. Right. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so, anybody else's birthday in the month of June that you want to recognize? Linda. I'm called Felix. Okay. And his two boys, Daryl and Wayne. Okay.
Okay. They're all in June. All in and June. Then my youngest grandson, Xander, he's going to be three, June 4th. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Steve. So why should you read? Oh. June what? 29th. June 29th. Oh, no, I missed that. Okay. All right. All right. Remember her. Yeah. Anyone else's birthday or anniversary in the month of June that we may have missed or you would like to mention? If not, Mr. Al will come at this time and lead us in a chorus of happy birthday to all. <laughs> Amen. 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 
medicine In the way of announcements, just a few things you need to be aware of, of what is going on and all that is taking place, of course. Um, today, of course, is Pentecost Day, in which the first day of Pentecost took place. Uh, we recognize the first day of Pentecost anyway. When the Holy Spirit came down upon Peter and all the rest, and they, man, they preached to, to thousands of people, and they came to know the Lord. Tomorrow, of course, is Memorial Day, and this is Memorial Weekend. Uh, June the 1st, of course, is the beginning of hurricane season, and again, you may want to just go ahead and go ahead and start preparing now, or get, get some items that you would like to make sure that it's still working. You want to check your flashlights and other things, and make sure that you're, if you have a generator, make sure your generator is working, and uh, make sure things are operational. You don't want to wait until there's one, in it, and hopefully there won't be, but if, there ever, if there's one to go off to where, you'll be running around with everything. Uh, you can also collect some type of canned foods that won't go to waste that you maybe eat. So different things that you can, you can prepare now for, uh, and hopefully it's better to be, be prepared early than run around and try to find it later, and then always have it with you as well. So be, be aware of that. Uh, June the 18th, of course, is Father's Day. Um, in the back, on the table back there, there are large print daily devotionals. If you would like to have one, please take one home, and, it, and it, it'll be there for you as well. Um, again, I've given many uh, the little paper with the food drive, uh, whatever you would like to bring. If you would like to bring anything, if you have anything, that's fine. Uh, for and they're doing this food food drive from May until August um, for families and, and kids as well over at CCC Community Christian Concern. Um, but just bring them here, and then I'll see to it that it gets over to Community Christian Concern. Uh, you know, we'll have a maybe put a box even in the front or in the back in the kitchen, and you can just put them in there uh, if you have any type of uh, food that you would like to have. Uh, also in the back in the foyer on the table, there's a bunch of uh, bottles of aspirin and um, I don't know, whatever else is in there. Uh, you can look in the bag and take them home. Uh, take some home. There's a whole bunch of them. So if you use aspirin and other things as well, cough drops, or whatever, I, you know, I don't know what's all in there. But a whole bunch of things are in there. So if you can use any of that, you know, take them home, and, and that'll be good. That'll keep you from having to buy aspirin and other things as well that's back there. So any, anything at all. Any other announcements? Anything else that may have, that my mom which does, anything else that you may like to mention as far as with anything? Um, I, I do know, I think tomorrow if you want to go, I think they're having some type of a, um, uh, of a, um, uh, thing over at the Veterans Cemetery from 11 to 12 um, for, for that. So they, uh, so they have it, they're having some kind of a uh, deal with that and everybody is welcome for that at the Veterans um, Cemetery off of uh, Interstate, uh, right off of Interstate 12, you know, right off the service road and, and past the public work system. You just keep on going. Uh, I think and you're having something there tomorrow between 11 and 12 o'clock if you would like to go there and visit with that as well. Today's National Hamburger Day. It's National Hamburger Day? I thought every day was National Hamburger Day. In America. My mom gets this cat. We get this calendar. Yeah, yeah. Day. Every day they have whatever National okay. Day it is. Yeah. Day or yeah. Day or okay. I think last week was ice cream day. <laughs> And so I looked at it and I said, well, it should come on Monday, Memorial Day, so people are going to eat hamburgers. That's right. There you go. Yeah. But I thought that was kind of... Okay. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, they, they do have national days for almost everything. Everything. You know, everything. I mean, national national hot dog day, national summer day, you, know, you name it. They got, they got something almost every day they have. But today's national but high burger day. <laughs> As day. my grandson says, hamburger. 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 Yes. Yeah, so anyway, 
Well, let's continue as Mr. Al comes now and leads us in another hymn as we sing hymn number 455, 455 I of Jesus. Virginia's God country, so you know we, we go back and forth with that. But he's up and up around that area with his family, and we have others as well. My granddaughter, grandson-in-law, they'll be traveling back today from Florida, and others are traveling as well. So just traveling mercies for the many, many people who are traveling. Um, just be in prayer for different people, of course, on, on our prayer list. Just to mention a few, just continue to remember. Mr. Larry Davis, he has some health issues that he is dealing with. So remember him in prayer. Call us Lawson and Gail Lawson, both of them. Pray for them. Shell and Brandy Armstrong, do continue to pray for both of them as they have their health issues. They have Johnny Garrett, of course, uh, what he deals with, and Debbie Garrett, too. Both of them, just continue to remember them in prayer. Again, all the men and women in the military who are serving, and who have served, who are still alive. Remember all of the men and women in the military and pray for them. Pray for the many, many people throughout uh, the United Methodist 
church. There is a split going on right now that is taking place with the United Methodist Church. And the split has to do with the fact of gay, lesbian, transgender, and clergy who are gay in, in the churches. And so there's a split now because of all of that. You have people in the churches who uh, have said it's okay for them to be in the churches and also to be a member of churches and that they're okay and others in the United Methodist churches where they're not. Well, this is becoming a, an ongoing problem, an issue not only for the United Methodist Church, but all churches, Lutherans, even Baptists, Catholic, and so forth. So this is not an issue where it's just one denomination, Pentecostal, you know, all of them. All, we're all dealing with, um, with this as far as, you know, what's going on so now. So you know, maybe if you get a paper today, you'll read or you have been reading with the United Methodists. There's this big old split going on and taking place among the churches. So pray for these many, many people that are dealing with this. It is very devastating to uh, the many people in, not only in the United Methodist churches, but in other churches as well, where this is taking place. So, so pray for this and pray for what's all going on and taking place as well. Um, pray, pray for uh, Steve's family and all, Schopenstein and the Rogers family, where uh, the passing of, uh, of Bill Rogers. I was telling Bill I mean, I was telling Steve that Bill Rogers, that uh, pal, Bill Rogers was the one who came when we gave the church to. The Grace Baptist Church. Yeah. Bill Rogers, well, he passed away this past week. But anyhow, so um, when we was at Victory Baptist Church in New Orleans, yes. Yeah. He and some others, you know, we disbanded and everything else, and he said, I, the Lord has put me off on my heart to do, so we, we gave him the church, we just gave him the keys and said, okay, here it is, and as far as with all of that, so, but unfortunately, you know, he, he too couldn't do anything with it as well, because demographically, the whole area has changed. He tried, uh, yeah. Spanish. Right. Speaking. Yes, uh, he tried, yeah, that's what they did, yes. And he did maintain the uh, old church for a while, but right. he remembers right. it was still there. Right. But it, it was with the neighborhood and all, it was just a, exactly. But I think the Lord used it. Exactly. And used it for its time and, and so forth. But anyhow, so pray for the Rogers family. Steve, that's his, Steve, that's his uncle. That's, 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 that's Steve's uncle. Uh, so he, he's, in, he's in with that family. But pray for them and with the passing of Bill. Mr. Bill right now is happy. He's, he's tickled pink. He's in heaven. He's walking the streets of gold. Uh, I, I, I know that. I, uh, just a short time that I was, you know, we, we knew him, you know, he, he was a, a man at the, at the Lord's own heart and did what he wanted to do, did what the Lord wanted him to do, so, um, so just pray for them. Uh, again, others, just remember others in our prayer list. Any other prayer requests, concerns, Thanksgiving? Miss Ginger? Um, the one thing, traveling mercies for Abby will be traveling back to Florida Thursday. Yeah. And uh, continued prayer for uh, Lindy and Mel, I did not, I meant to call her this weekend. I didn't yes. know if she's still in that hospital. Right. Time. Okay. So, but, but remember her in prayer. The Lord knows okay. what she is and what's going on. Sure, yes. And, and yeah. just pray for my family. <coughs> yeah. Right, and pray for Abby if she's taking care of two, two, two um, yeah. <laughs> juvenile delinquents. <laughs> Actually, she's got four, so. Oh, is it four? Four, yeah. Oh, I didn't know there were four. I know there was only two. Oh, gracious. Okay. Oh, poor Abby. Okay. We should never have children. Yeah. <laughs> and, and congratulations to Abby, too. She graduated uh, Thursday, um, second in her class. Yeah, second in her class. That was awesome. So she, so she graduated from Big Union High School this past Thursday. So, yes. I wish you could hear her speech. Yeah, she did. She did real good. So just pray for all the young people, though. Pray for all of them. All the graduates and all the young people as well. Other prayer requests. Uh, Janet, yeah, pray for Janet. Janet 
has stomach issues this morning. That's why she's not here. So remember her. Tika. Uh, could we pray for Saddleback Church? I understand they're given some difficulty yeah. because they have chosen to yes, ordain sir. women into ministerial Again, positions. Again, this is the and, problem we have. Yes. Yeah, and I think they need prayer. Yes. I don't know what God's right. Yes. Feelings yeah, are on that issue, right. but the church feels like God wants them to do that. And I just think they need prayer. Yeah. Well, from what I read, unfortunately, Rick Warren is a proponent of that, too. So, and he retired from Saddleback Church, but he's a proponent of that. So I don't know. There's an article in the Baptist Message. That we have a couple of them in there right. if you want to take it in the Baptist I Message. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, they have an issue. But again, that's the other issue. You're right. Thank you for that. That's the other issue we need to pray for as well, is that in, in especially in the Baptist um, uh, and, uh, I know in the Southern Baptist, there, there's this ongoing issue of whether women should be ordained as ministers. Um, in, in the Bible, wasn't there an ordained or a lady who ran a church no. or had a church no. or there was preached never, in a church? There was no, no, there was no one who was ordained or ordained. There was, uh, Philip had four daughters who were evangelists. That was about it. That we read that when I preach, but nobody was, but they never had a woman who was ordained or ever was. And according to the Word of God, it is against the Word of God, from what I have read and what I have seen in there. So I'll tell you right now that I'm not a proponent of it because the Word of God says that we should not, and that women should not usurp authority over man uh, as well. And being a pastor, they wouldn't usurp authority over 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 men. So it doesn't, and because, and also the qualifications coming for uh, the office of elder or slash pastor uh, is also just for the men. Uh, so no, and they, and, and even though in there they say that, well, there were women who were in the upper room who were praying. Yeah, but they were praying, but that doesn't mean that they were they were ministers or anything else like that. And it does say in Matthew chapter 28, go ye therefore into all the nations, baptizing and making disciples. But it doesn't say that they need to be pastors. Anyone, a woman too, can go out and you know tell about Jesus Christ. You know, but but to be ordained, to me, from what I read from the Word of God, there is no there was there was no one who was ever ordained or called in in the Bible to be a pastor, minister, or anything else. Johnny Gary. Yeah, Frank, and, you know, of course, in the Old Testament, Deborah led the, uh, led the country of Israel, but it was at the men's disgrace. Right. It was at the men's disgrace. Yes. Yeah, and she was only a judge. Right. Yes. Yes. So right. she didn't fulfill the office of priest, even. No, but I'm sorry. She yes. was a judge, so she was a leader. Yeah, you're right. And, uh, but even at that, God allowed that because it was at the men's disgrace, because there was no one who would stand up. And she said that, too. That's right. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 and Barrick said, well, that's okay. I don't have a problem with that, Barrick said. And he didn't want to do it. Then he didn't want to take a leave. Yes. prayer uh, to conform to the word. Right, exactly. And this is, <laughs> but this is also what's happening, not just with women pastors, but this is what's happening with, with also with, um, with the gay, lesbian thing in the churches as well. They're not conforming to the word of God. See, and that's what, that's the other issue. So yes, uh, important. so appreciate that. Yes, so pray for our own Southern Baptist realm because this is going to be coming up. We uh, And pray for the many people who are going to be uh, at the convention uh, June the 11th in New Orleans. Pray for them especially because they're in New Orleans. And we know how terrible and how bad it is right now. And they're there. So pray for them as the, as the convention will be at, at the Superdome in New Orleans um, the second week in June. So pray pray for them, and that will be coming up. Appreciate it. Yes. Linda. Um, we remember in prayer, um, the mama's roommate, Mr. Morris, okay. her daughter-in-law um, was diagnosed with pancreas and spinal um, cancer, mm. and they had to cut her from... Like behind under her neck all the way down and then like a peace sign and she got a lot of stitches and um, they had to reconstruct her whole spine. And, and how old so, is this? How old is she? She's like in her 40s. I think. Really? She's really old. Wow. 
And Lord, as the Southern Baptists will be convening or coming together for the convention in June, we pray for all that goes on with that as well. Be with us, lead us, guide us, and direct us. In the name of Jesus, we ask it. Amen. Let us stand at this time as Mr. Al comes and he leads us for our offertory hymn, hymn number 544, Redeemed How I Love to Proclaim. <laughs>
You cannot go to Russia and do what we do here. You cannot go to the Middle East and do what we do here. You cannot go up into other places. Only here in the USA do you have the freedom to do many things. The memorial service actually began on May 5th of 1866, and it was to honor some local veterans who have fought and died in the Civil War. And then from there, they added more and more and more after that. And basically in 1966 or 1967, uh, President Johnson declared a National Memorial Day, uh, and it then it became basically the last Monday in May to where it was. It used to be on a different time, at a different time, but then they, they decided to go ahead and just put it on the last Monday in May to honor the many who had fallen. But today, in Memorial Day, I want us to remember and not forget about what our great Jehovah God, our Father, has given us and what he did for us that we today can say, I am truly free. He has given us all that we have and even the things that we do not see, everything. And he really gave us his freedom because he sent his son. And he, his son, Jesus, came voluntarily. This was orchestrated now in heaven by the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit even before the creation of the world. Even before God created any one of you or me. Even before he created Adam and Eve. God had already orchestrated to sin. And Jesus already said, I'll go. I'll give up my seat. I'll go down there and I'll die for every sinner, for every one in the world. He did this. He came. And today we want to, I want us to look at Deuteronomy chapter 8 very briefly and to remember the great God and Father that we have. And the things that we have we need to remember. That is from our Father. Sure, we do things with our hands. Sure, you work. Sure, you do things. But all of that too was the ability given to you by God the Father through Jesus Christ. Everything. Everything. Everything that you own, all the stuff that you have, came from Him. So look at what happens. So what we need to remember is, I want us to remember these three things coming from Deuteronomy chapter 8. First, remember God's commandments. Remember his commands. Remember his words. Remember what he said. Remember, and as here, as Moses is giving the people of Israel these things concerning what God would have for them to do as they're entering the promised land, or they're about to, but unknowing to Moses, they're not going to enter it, they're going to journey another 40 years, but supposedly the first time that he's put it, he gave him this message. Be careful to follow every command I'm giving to you today, so that you may live and increase and may enter and possess the land that the Lord promised as an oath to your forefathers. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the desert these 40 years. So this is the second time. The first time they they journey. They didn't do this. So this is, and, and understand, as Moses is given this, he himself will not be going into the promised land. You know, so he's telling them there. Now, when you go into the land, in, in verse 2, remember how the Lord, in these 40 years, how he humbled you and tested you in order to know that what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commandments. He humbled you causing you to hunger, then feeding you in manna, which neither you nor your fathers have known to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothes did not wear out. Your feet did not swell during these 40 years. Know then in your heart 
that a man that a man disciplines his son, and so the Lord your God disciplines you. Observe the commands of the Lord your God. Walk in his ways and reverend him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with streams and pools of water, with streams flowing in the valley and the hills, a land with wheat and barley, vines and fig, and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil, and honey. All of these things he's telling them what's going to happen here and what's taking place. Isn't this amazing? What does he want them to do? Again, as I mentioned, they have just come through the desert for 40 years. And they have journeyed and they have realized what the Lord, and, they, and Moses is telling them, look at what the Lord has done for you in these 40 years when you journeyed in the desert. Well, we too, many of us today, we have journeyed in this life over 40 years, have we not? And look at what the Lord has given to us over these years. <coughs> so I'm at last, but the Lord has done this. And they were to remember the leading of God. How God <coughs> tested them. How God humbled them. How God revealed his grace and his mercy, but also, as it said, he disciplined them for their good. So they would know. It was God who led them through the dark times through the hard times, and through the desert. God allowed the times of testing in order to do what? To make them stronger. To make them more <coughs> dependent upon him and not upon themselves. You know, things come in our lives as well that God allows. And it is revealed to us that we need to depend upon the Lord and not our own strength or our own might. Many times we become too proud. Many times we think, oh, I can do this by myself. And we don't realize, I can't. In the song we sing, I must tell Jesus all of my burdens. See, the problem comes in is we don't tell Jesus everything in our, on our heart. And he knows what we're going through. And he wants us to come before him and tell him all of the things that's going on. And we don't do this. And the other song that we sing, we, we suffer so much because we do not give it to the Lord in prayer. We think, I will do it. I will take care of it. Today, again, it's no different. God has allowed difficulties. He has allowed temptations. He has problems. He has allowed health issues. He has allowed different things in our lives. In order that, again, that we may be more dependent upon him and not ourselves. See, when we become dependent upon ourselves, we fail. But when we depend upon him, he gives us the strength. And he helps us to grow. Not only physically, but he helps us to grow spiritually as well. You know, in Romans chapter 5... In verse 3 and following, and it says, in here, according to the word of God. Um, here it says, not so, but only also, but we may also rejoice in sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character, and character produces hope. And that hope does not disappoint us. Because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. So you see, we need to be careful. We, we today, just as Moses told the people, remember the commands of God. Today we need to do the same thing. We need to remember the commands and the words of God. Again, as we mentioned earlier, this is why so many churches, why so many people are having so many issues and problems because people have gotten away from the word. Because people have said, oh, this is not prevalent. This is not applicable to today. This happened years ago. We need to change. No, we don't. We need to honor the word of God and do what the word of God says. We need to go along with the word of God and not change the word of God. There is nothing wrong with the commands of the words of God. The problem is, we are. We need to change. We need to change. <coughs> People don't want to change. 
They want to change the word of God to fit their sinful opinion or what they think. And that's not the right thing to do as well. God's commands are for our good and his glory. Always. Always. There's, God is perfect. If he says whatever he says, it's perfect. He's right. Let me ask you, who are we to change the word of God or even to say God is wrong? I would never dare say, as a Christian, as a believer, God is never wrong. I am wrong if I go against the commands and the words of God. God is never wrong. He is perfect in every way. And what he gave the people was for their good and for his glory as well. Remember the commands of God. Don't be like the rest of the world today who is changing the words and the commands of God for their own means and doing things. We see what's... Do you see what is going on and what's happening when you do that? There is chaos. There is division. There is hurt. There are problems because they're doing all of those things. So remember the commands of God. They are good. They are good. And we need to follow those things. The second thing, going back up to verse 7 and following again, is remembering God's power. What do I mean? Remembering what God has done and what he has given and what he's, what he's going to do. Look, notice what he says here in verse 7 and following. He's bringing them into a land, and this land is going to be what? This land will be streams and pools of water with springs flowing in the valleys and the hills. A land with wheat, barley, vines, fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil, and honey. A land where bread will, be, will not be scarce, where they lack nothing. A land where the, rocks, where, where the rocks are iron and you can dig copper out of the hills. And when you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. However... Be careful. Be careful that you don't forget the Lord your God. Failing to observe his commands, his laws, his decrees that I'm giving you today. Otherwise, what will happen? When you eat and you are satisfied, you will build fine houses and settle down. And when your herds and flocks grow large and your silver and your gold increase, all of you and multiply, then in your heart will the Lord, then, then, then your heart will become proud, and you will forget the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You see what he's saying, telling them? It was God who brought them into this land flowing with milk and with honey. It was God by his, by, and by God's power. They're enjoying what they're going to enjoy when they go into the land of Canaan. And yet, and that land of Canaan will be fruitful. It will give satisfaction to them. They will find there all that they need to find and to enjoy. However, a word of caution, danger, danger. Prosperity, as you notice in verse 11 to 14, he says, Prosperity brings and may bring temptation. The temptation to forget that it was God who had given you what you have today. It was God who has given us what we have today. Our homes, our cars, our clothes, all the things that we have today. He gave us the ability to do the things that we do or did, and still giving us the ability to do things. Sure, we may not do as we used to do, but we're still able to do by the power of God. Understand that in some cases, prosperity can be good and also can be dangerous. But it's good because we have to know that it was God by his power that he has given those things. You know, we, we, we sometimes, as he says in here, you know, your heart will become proud and you will forget. You know, be careful. 
It's best to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, the Word of God says. We become complacent. And many times we forget. We forget the source of all of our marvelous gifts and stuff that we have. And I know everyone here, we all have a bunch of stuff. Every one of us. And everything we have came from God. You know, don't be like many examples in the Old Testament and New, but in the Old Testament, Nebuchadnezzar. You know, he was even warned by God. Be careful. Give glory to God. God has given you what you see. God has built your kingdom. Jehovah God has done it. He walked out on that terrace. He looked over the land. And there he said, oh, I did all of this. I can just see him doing all of that. I did this. Giving glory to God. <laughs> all those words no sooner came out of his mouth. He was out there for seven years like a cow eating grass. Feathers like a bird. Looked terrible. For seven years, he was out. He was away. It says, when the Lord restored, when the Lord restored his mind, he gave glory and honor to Jehovah God. He says, indeed, you have done all of these things. Sometimes it takes people a hard thing to realize God is doing all of this. This is all by the power of God. And the most important thing, if you notice in here, he says, then your heart will become proud and you'll forget the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. God, through Jesus Christ, brought us out of slavery. He brought us. He gave up. He, he sent his son. His son, Jesus Christ, came. Again, his son, Jesus Christ, gave up his seat in heaven to come to earth, born of a virgin, just to die on the cross for our sins. Gave up his seat. Can you imagine? Would you give up a place that is perfect without sin, holy and righteous? Absolutely not. But Jesus did, willingly, voluntarily. And he went on the cross and he atoned and died for our sin so that we can get away, so that we can be a free people, free from slavery, from the slave of sin, Satan, and even death. God in his mercy seat, he set us free by sending his son, by his son giving up himself as a sacrifice for all of us. You see, our real freedom is found in Jesus Christ, not in the things of the world. In John chapter 8, here the word of God so relates and tells us. If you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And they answered him, wait a minute. We have Abraham as our descendants and never have been a slave to anyone. Oh, how long they were. How can you say that you will set them free? And Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. You don't think that's true. Look around and see what's all going on. People are gratifying their own sinful natures and doing things that's contrary to the things of God. And it's not right. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. And he did this at Calvary. By his power, he did all of this. And then the last thing we see from here as well in the remaining verses in 15 <coughs> through 20 is remembering God's faithfulness. God has always been faithful. Always. We have not. But God has. He led you through the vast and dreadful desert, that thirsty and wasteless land. 
with his venomous snakes and scorpions. He brought you water out of, out of the hard rock. He gave you manna to eat in the desert, something your, far, far, something your fathers have never known, to humble and to test you so that in the end it might go well with you. You may say to yourself, my power, my strength of my hand had produced the wealth for me. But remember, the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. So confirms his covenant, which he swore to your forefathers as it is today. If you ever forget the Lord your God and follow other gods and worship and bow down to them, I testify against you today that you will surely be destroyed like nations, like the nations the Lord destroyed before you, so you will be destroyed for not obeying the Lord your God. You know, Moses here, he's spelling it out. He's telling them like it is. He's spelling out the dangers that will take place that's involved and in forgetting that it is God and his faithfulness to them and how he led them. And however, the climax of their spiritual decline was the fact that they not only forgot the word of God, they not only forgot the commands of God, but then they started worshiping false gods. They started doing the things that they should never have done. The climax of their spiritual decline was the worshiping of false gods and not acknowledging the one true God. You know, in Romans chapter 1 and in verse 21, even here, the word of God so reveals, for although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him. For their thinking became futile, and their foolish hearts were darkened. You see what happens? You see what happens when you forget the word of God. You see what happens when you forget it is God who gave you these things? what he's done for you. See, you turn your back on God. And God says, okay, here's what's going to happen. And this is what's going to take place. You know, the decline in our country, the U.S. of A, we're declining. We're declining at a fast rate. I mean, you look around, you can see it. You see what's all going, and why? Because people have gotten away from the word of God. Yes. Because people have taken the commands and the words of God and have thrown them out and put their own words in there. Because people are doing their own things. They're not obeying the word of God. And it's sad to see this. Now, be careful. Prosperity, ingratitude, idolatry, it can lead a person to ruin. But it can also be good. It never ruined Abraham. And you know why? Because Abraham humbled himself under God's mighty hand. Abraham knew it was God Almighty who was giving me all of these things. All that I have is from him. And others as well we can look at as examples of in both the Old and the New Testament. Who gave honor and glory to God and had much in their lives. You know, idolatry comes in many shapes, sizes, and colors. It's not just a, a, a statue or something else. Idolatry can also be whatever you may have that you worship more than God, that you honor more than God, be it, be it a thing, be it a, a person, or whatever the case may be. Honor God and worship him above all things and in your house and in your home. Put God first. And everything else underneath. God is always first. If you forget the Lord your God, and you go after these things even today, and you serve them, trust me, you will, you will suffer the consequences that you do not want to suffer. We see what's the consequences of happening now. Trust me, when I tell you that all that, again, as I repeat, all that's taking place in the U.S. of A today is because of the fact people have turned their backs on God. They have not honored the word of God. They have not looked to the Lord and said, Lord, because of you. They have taken the Bible 
out of the schools. They have taken the things out of the courts. They have taken prayer out of different places. They have done many things to where they have said, God is not important. And we're suffering because of it today. Make no mistake about it. All that you see and happening today. Again, I'm sure as I look around and as you look around today, and you see our nation, you tell me, you think we are a nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all? Absolutely not. We are not. Because God has been taken out of the picture. God is not a part of it. And we're suffering because of it. And we don't have to. All we have to do is bow, is come back to the Lord, is honor the Lord, is come back to Him and get rid of all of those other things that should not be as well. You know, you, as you look at the examples of the Old Testament people, you know what their downfall was? Worshiping false idols, turning their back on God. And God says, if you return to me, and I will bless you, and I will love you again, and I will be there for you. But if you do not, I will not bless you. He still cares. And he still it grieves him to see what kind of a nation we are today. I know this. Because it grieves me as a Christian, as a believer. And it should grieve you as well. Let us not be a part of that. Let us be like Daniel. Daniel, though he was in captivity, he still honored the Lord. He still honored the Word of God. He still knew that it was by the power of God. In captivity all of his life, you know, I, I often mention Daniel because Daniel is my prime example of how we should live even when we're in a country that does not honor God. We should not do what the rest are doing. But instead, we should do what the Word of God so declares. Obey His commands. Know that it is by His power we are who we are. And that God is faithful throughout. And that He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. And that He says unto, not only to me, but even to the lost today, He says, the Spirit of the Bride says, Come. Let him who hears say, come. Whoever is thirsty, let him come. Whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of life. And to all who repent of their sin and put faith in Jesus Christ, they can have the blessings of God. They can know what it means to have joy, peace, and happiness, even in the midst of chaos and division. It can happen. But we need to get back and get right with God. My question to you today is, are you right with God? Do you know Him as your Lord and as your Savior? Do you recognize Him as the one who is all-powerful? The one who is faithful? The one who is, God, who is Lord of all and God of all? And that we need to obey His commands and what He has done. I pray that if you know this, awesome. If not, I invite you today to have Jesus Christ come in your heart and in your life, that you may truly know him as Lord and as Savior. Let us stand. Almighty God, as we come at this time, Lord, if there's anyone here today that truly does not know you, I pray, Lord, that you have already talk to them. I pray you already put it into their hearts. You open their hearts and just like Lydia who came, they too may come as well. All of this we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So if God is speaking to you, that you come as we sing 275, I, I surrender all.
say, I repeat, we live in a time and an age now where so many have gotten away from the things of God. We're living in an age where people are not obeying the things that God has so commanded us. For whatever reason, let us not do the same. Let us be faithful to God just as He is faithful to us. Let us represent and be ambassadors for Jesus Christ. Let us go out and tell and show others the right things to do. Not do as the world does. But do. And it's not going to be easy. It's going to be difficult. But it can be done. And how is it done? According to what it says in Ephesians chapter 6. Put on the whole armor of God so that you so that we can take our stand against the forces of this evil world. So we can do what we need to do by his power and his might. We invite you to come back Wednesday night. Wednesday night we have Bible study from 6.30 to 7, 7.30. Uh, food and fellowship from 6 to 6.30 for all who would like to come. If not, we invite you to come back next Sunday. We have Bible study in the morning from 9 to 10 for all. And then worship time. 10.30 to 11.30. All who would like to come and worship God in spirit and in truth and know that we go according to what is written in the word of God. We honor his word and his commands as well. I pray God's blessing upon each and every one. Again, we are in Memorial Weekend. Do let us remember the many, many people who have given their lives so that we can have the freedom to even come here at Bayou Baptist Church, where many people do not have this freedom. But we do. Think of the first century Christians. They had to go in catacombs and underground and other places just to worship. We can open freely so far. But there may be coming a time where even this, for us, may happen to where we're not going to have this freedom because, again, so many people are getting away. But remember the many service people, men who are living and also will pass, but credit and their families as well. But most of all, remember our Lord and our Savior who came and died on the cross to give us true freedom. And if you know him, then you have freedom. But if you don't, then you truly don't know what freedom is. And we're praying for you that you'll come to know Jesus Christ and know and it says, if the Son set you free, you will be free indeed. And I pray that you can do this as well. Now, lead us in the closing prayer, please. Heavenly Father, and we come before you, thanking you for all that you've done for us. And listening to your word and seeing what you've done for others throughout. We know, Father, you are always there for us. Father, all you want is us to turn to. Thank you, Lord, for each one that is here this day. Again, I pray for those that weren't able to be here. I pray, Father, for those that are watching online. I pray, Father, that you touch many, many hearts. Be with us now as we leave and go our separate ways. Bring us back to come and worship again together. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
Back in there. Back in there. <laughs>